How many new Republican congressmen have we interviewed on this program over the last couple of weeks? And they said one of the top priorities is to impeach Secretary Mayorkas of Homeland Security because of his bungling of the border, because he lied about the border being secure, right? Why should Mayorkas be impeached? We keep asking why. What's the rationale? I think once you learn about Secretary Mayorkas, the question should be why hasn't he already been impeached? So writes David Marcus, of course, one of our favorites, Blue Box Dave on social media. And you made the case, didn't you? I think it was, wait, yeah, I mean, your columns appear at 10 different sites, but I think this one was Daily Wire. David, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, seriously, why, why is this guy even still there? This has been, uh, abs- I mean, there's a lot of disasters in the Biden administration, but the disaster of the border, the disaster of the unsecured border, to be specific, and this record numbers of migration, which has now even become a problem for Mayor Eric Adams in New York. Suddenly they're a border town and he sees the crunch. This is a no brainer, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think it is. Uh, you know, a popular parlor game uh, in and around D.C. is, you know, who's the worst cabinet secretary? And it's a competitive category. I mean, you know, Pete Buttigieg and, you know, a host of others. But Um, Mayorkas is uniquely bad, not just because he's bad at his job, right? You can't impeach somebody for being bad at their job. There have to be, quote, high crimes and misdemeanors. Now, as we learned during the Trump administration, a high crime and misdemeanor is whatever Congress says it is, right? right? We heard that over and over and over again. Where I think we see at least misdemeanors, if not high crimes, is with the, the lying that you mentioned. I mean, for him to, to go before Congress and say the border is secure, I mean, it's just a lie. Uh, and I think that would be enough on its own. But I think the even worse lie uh, was the incident with the border agents who didn't whip anybody, right? The ones on horses. Yeah. Um, and, and this video came out and Mayorkas and the, the whole administration basically just called these guys, you know, horrible racists. Yep. And it was a lie. And then Mayorkas went to Congress and he said, there's going to be an investigation. It will take days, not weeks. It took almost a year. And guess what? Nobody was whipping anybody. That's right. You can't ask the border agents to keep working for this guy who smeared them yeah. this way. It's, it's just not fair. By the way, Mayorkas knew it too. There's now, uh, through a FOIA request, there's an email that's been revealed where the border patrol, the men on the ground, the men actually doing the work that Mayorkas has put them in danger doing, said, that we don't have any whips. These weren't whips, these were straps. That the, the If anything, these mounted border patrol agents were acting incredibly safe and restrained in wrangling these people out of a dangerous situation. He knew that before he made his statements and he went ahead and demonized those people. So I, I, I think you're right about that. But, but here's the question. You just said, David Marcus, that the Biden administration echoed this. They repeated it. Jen Psaki said it from the podium. President Biden said it as well. So if you impeach Mayorkas over this, what's the argument against impeaching Biden for the same thing? Uh, you know, I, I hey, it, uh, sign me up for that. But, um, <laughs> impeach yeah, all of them. Absolutely. Yeah, don't, don't tempt me with a good time, Larry. Um, <laughs> look, I. I this is this is Mayorkas's specific area of control and his specific duty. He is the direct superior um, of these people who he lied about. And I was in Del Rio just days after uh, that incident occurred, uh, talking to the people on the ground there, and they were furious. Um, they love the border agents. Half of them are related to the border agents. Um, so it's it's really untenable and. Aside from everything else, as you said, he's just horrible at this job. But then again, it may be that Biden and the Democrats want somebody who can't keep the border secure. That's fair enough. But let's not forget, this is more than just an immigration issue. It's more than a drug issue, although that's a big part of it with fentanyl. Uh, Border Patrol was put under the new umbrella of Homeland Security. He's the Secretary of Homeland Security after 9-11, and now we learn that there have been over 100 people on the terrorist watch list who have attempted to cross the border, and who knows how many have gotten through. Uh, This is a national security concern, and it's serious stuff, David. Oh, I I mean, absolutely. You know, the the farther that we get from 9-11, and you know, you and I are both obviously old enough to remember that day very well, there there are are a lot of adults now who, who don't, right? Uh, I think a complacency has set in uh, and the idea that, well, you know, that's that's not going to happen again. Well, it absolutely could happen again. And the likelihood of it happening again 
is much greater if we're not paying any attention to who's coming across the border. I mean, I, that's just obvious. Uh, David Marcus is our guest and uh, one of our favorite columnists. I think your prose is fantastic. And your, uh, your opinions, though uh, conservative, don't fall into your basic cookie cutter conservative punditry kind of thing. You know, you've got a bit of an edge to you. You're, I wouldn't call you libertarian. I'm maybe even libertine in some cases. That's why I was a little shocked to see this love letter of a column you wrote to none other than Pat Buchanan. Over at Human Events, you wrote that Pat Buchanan is actually the most influential political thinker for you personally. Uh, tell me about that. I, mean, I, I have great admiration for Pat Buchanan, but I would have never guessed that he was your muse. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. I write in the column that in the late 80s as a teenager, you know, my, I, I lived in Philadelphia. Everybody was a Democrat. Um, my, my parents were big lefties, you know, my whole family. Um, and I remember I would, I would watch the McLaughlin group and here was this guy, right? Conservatives then, you know, it was George Will with the bow tie. It was very apologetic. It, it was very sort of like right. Chamber of Commerce stuff. And here was this pugnacious Irish Catholic um, who just wasn't shy about the fact that we needed to have manufacturing in America, that we couldn't be the policemen of the world. And I think most importantly, who cherished West, Western values at a time when Republicans were very shy about talking about that. Yeah. Every Republican throughout the 1990s and, and even into the 2000s, they were terrified of being called racists or bigots. And Buchanan was clear. Um, that Western values are, are important. He fought against political correctness or what we now call wokeness. Uh, and that was deeply inspiring to me. Hmm. And uh, and yeah, you're right. He was, I guess he was politically incorrect before we even used the term. Uh, it, people do forget in that era that he did stand out. And by the way, you talk about McLaughlin Group. He had that, he had Crossfire, he had Capital Gang. I mean, he was everywhere. Uh, both, two of those shows, by the way, on CNN, back when CNN was a very different network. Uh, and by the way, we don't mean to eulogize Pat Buchanan as if he's no longer with us, but he did announce that he's laying down his pen. He will no longer do his weekly column. Yeah, and 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 he's a fantastic columnist. I mean, one of the things I, I say in the um, in the piece that I wrote is that the best columnist, it's, it, it, it's, it's not about inside information. It's not about hot takes. It's really about style. Um, and I think... The, the best columnists are the ones who like you want to sit at the bar and you know have a beer with and talk some politics um, hmm. and that's Pat Buchanan I, yeah. I mean he's, he's just unsurpassed in that area and I and I had the chance to, to meet him when I did McLaughlin group and he was so kind you know I was really a nobody and he you know he made me feel important he was he was exactly who you see on TV I mean, really wonderful man and it's fair to say again you know it's 2023, we got to shoot everything through the prism of Trump. There wouldn't have been the rise of Donald Trump without Pat Buchanan before him. I mean, I think that's a no brainer, isn't it? I, I, I think it's true. I mean, people forget that the first votes that Donald Trump ever got for president weren't in 2016. They were in 2000 when he ran briefly for the Reform Party uh, nomination, won California and Michigan. He was running against Pat Buchanan. Yeah. And, 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 and those Reform Party values of you know, bring jobs back to America. A. Trust Perot talking about the great sucking sound towards Mexico, right? right? A strong border fighting the culture war. We all remember the 1992 RNC speech that Pat Buchanan gave. Yeah. He got everything right. Yeah, Buchananism. He, he, was, he was just right. Buchananism before Trumpism. All right, there's more to come with David Marcus on O'Connor tonight.